Pixar. It's pretty awesome. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I have all kinds of Pixar stuff all over, including my new phone cases, Wally. Um, I'm a huge Pixar fan, but I always feel that like Pixar animated movies are different from other animated movies, and I never know why. Um, I mean, their visuals are different, but like I feel like something in the story just connects to everyone more so. So then I did some research on it, and um, I think all it has to do with um, a lot of the like moral messages in Pixar. So some good examples are first of all like the Pixar shorts. I don't know if you guys have seen those, but a lot of times they're before the movies. Um, and Pixar's like moral messages date all the way back to 1988. Um, their first actual like full length motion picture wasn't until Toy Story in 1995, but. Uh, back in uh, 1988, there was a short called Tin Toy. I don't know if you've seen it. It's about a little, um, it's about a little toy who kind of just goes around like hitting the uh, drum, and he's a clappy toy. But uh, his owner Billy is like super mean, and so at first Tin Toy just hides under the bed, and he's like, "I'm gonna get away from him." But then he realizes that it's happening to all the other toys too, so he decides to like put them. Uh, before himself and like stand up and try and make things better and like it teaches you that like sometimes you're gonna have to put others before yourself and like make things morally right um, even if you like get hurt in the process um, another one is in 2002 um, the short for the birds is about a bunch of birds who are like bickering with each other and like trying to kick each other off um, and this one, like, they're all the exact same, but then this one big, like, ugly bird comes and sits on a telephone wire with the rest of them, and they all want it to leave, and slowly, like, the wire lowers because this bird's so big, and then it just, all of them get kicked off the wire. It's like, if people could just get along and ex accept our differences, like, everything would work better for everyone. Um, and then there's one more short, which is the one before Toy Story 3, um, it's the most clear example of it is day and night. Uh, there's these kind of there are these two guys, and one of them is the daytime and one of them is the nighttime, and they're kind of fighting with each other. But then they like stop for a second and they pay attention to each other and they realize that they actually have a lot more in common than they think. And at that point, like they just get along. There's harmony, and that's kind of I feel like that especially has to do with our world and like if you just accept others for their differences and notice them and realize that even though people are very different in like a lot of ways, race, and culture, religion, a lot of things, if people would just like take a step back and realize that we're all people, like obviously things would be better. So, I mean, the shorts are a pretty clear example of, uh, of all that, but the movies definitely are too. Um, and they have very like some of their messages are really simple, like uh, Toy Story is like, uh, you know, your friends may come and go. Like at first, um, when Andy gets Buzz Lightyear, he sort of rejects Woody, and like Woody falls under the bed. But by the end, you know, like everyone learns to accept each other, and um, it's sort of yeah, friends are gonna come and go, and like relationships will come and go. But in the end, like it'll all work out. Um, uh, and then a lot of the movies have messages just about family. Uh, Finding Nemo, perfect example. Like, Nemo gets lost. Marlon does whatever he can to get him back. Um, and Monsters, Inc., same kind of thing. Like, just about love and, and caring for each other and accepting each other. Um, yeah. Um, there's so many messages of love, like in Up with uh, 
should be accepted as a good thing or feared as an evil thing. And I think it's good that, um, especially like, yes, animated movies are still for children. And if children are growing up with these messages of accepting things that are different and learning to deal with change, like, that's a good thing. Um, if anyone has any questions, go for it. And if you just want to talk about Pixar, we can do that too. <laughs>
just Pixar, and then Disney supported Pixar as a separate branch, um, but had nothing to do in the, with the creation process, and Pixar has always refused to let Disney participate in that. And then Disney was upset that they couldn't participate in that process, so they abandoned Pixar, and Pixar went back to working on its own. And then Disney realized that Pixar was really successful, so they wanted to be able to attach their name to it again. So then Disney, like, it now has that again coexisting relationship with Pixar, which helps them for you know it just gives them more money and advertising purposes. And like at Disneyland, you know, there's like there's Cars attractions and Toy Story attractions and stuff now, so it just makes it more marketable. But Disney still is separate from. I've seen it several times and I still have no idea how it works for them. I think a lot of it is just chance. 